All right, YouTube, here we go again with the lovely Ecotec 1.4 Turbo. Uh, I went in for service, it's a pretty good service shop. They identified a little coolant leak in my coolant tank. They also said this hose was bad, but really with the hose, what was going on probably was the lovely plastic manifold. I've replaced this part before, uh, but if you can see right there, when you tighten down the clamp, this brittle old plastic just turns into like cardboard and just totally breaks off and dissolves. So it was, it uh, lost all its coolant, but luckily it made it home without any problem. But I shut off the car, looked at it, could see coolant pouring out of there and got on Amazon and I ordered uh, aluminum replacement for that. I also got aluminum thermostat buried down there. So I'm gonna try to change them both out. I've done this one before a couple years ago. It's been a while, but um, Anyway, that's going on with that. Okay, here's the parts. This is the water outlet or coolant outlet. It's all aluminum. Um, here's the brand right there. I'll put it in the description below. This one's by Midzone. That's the uh, thermostat. I believe I put a Midzone cover on it to get good reviews. Anyway, this thing's like solid aluminum of some kind. It'll be way better off than that stupid plastic as long as everything fits up. So that's what the parts look like. There's other videos, I can put some links on those of the steps it takes to get to everything, but this is just more of a, stop putting cheap plastic crap on there and put on uh, actually what it should have been to begin with, which is an aluminum part. So that's those. A couple more things I got for this job. Went to Hazardous Frat and got one of their automotive hook sets. Um, I have their smaller set, but these will help with getting some things off. And then I also got some E-drivers here versus the conventional sockets. Uh, I'll put a description where you can get things like this on Amazon in the description below. But uh, yeah, everything's on e-sockets, so I don't want to round off the hexagon, uh, round off the corners on the bolts that are there. I doubt it's that high a torque, but don't want to discover it. Okay, doing a little bit of forensics here. I got the uh, manifold off. Make sure you get all the parts because this thing was stuck inside the hose. But you can see it just dissolved. You want to puzzle piece it back together if this happens to you. Be sure that you have all the parts. But it, it's like cardboard. Like this stuff just turns to total garbage. And this thing's only been on there like a few years or something like that. So yeah, that's the crap going on with that. And then uh, got it off there and make sure you clean it up really good. Run your finger across this. I run a plastic razor blade. I'll show you that in a second. For here's my assortment of tools. Right here, one of these guys, and you scrape. You probably don't want to use a razor blade, but these little plastic guys can keep from scratching up because well, it can leak through that. Also got some of this super lube. It's PTFE grease, which is basically tough one. Um, and put that on the seal. That's usually recommended. But yeah, that's all the stuff going on right now. All right, another thing to note, this little C-clip here was pointed on the other way. When I took the old one off, the only thing saving my butt was the C-clip was on this side towards the big outlet. So I was able to pull it out with the uh, in those pliers, pull this thermostat out, and then I was able to get to the connector and see it really good around the part and around with it. So as this thing came, that's the only thing I noticed. It can go on either way, but anyway, I flipped that, so I just wanted to point that out. All right, another little tech tip here. Uh, the old one, the only redeeming quality is these bolts are captured, so they stay in there. This new one is just a through hole, so I'm going to start with the bolt that is furthest away from my vision. And you can put an, um, the E10 socket on it and start with that. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. All right, torque time. Uh, I think, remember all of the latest stuff, it's like around 15 Newton meters. Yay, the metric system. So you, you can see it right there on the dual beam. I'm not touching the handle on either side of what I'm doing. I'm just balancing it. So there you go with that. Um, you do have a dual beam and you can't make full rotation. Just spin that one, one side on the square and it'll get you to where you need to go. But yeah, there's the, the new manifold and it's in. All right, this, uh, what do you call it, turbo cooling guy right here, had this hose on it. It's still pliable, um, but it did not want to come off and the new one came with a new hose. So I ended up cutting it with the razor 
and peeling it off. But yeah, it was stuck on there like no tomorrow, probably because of the heat. Anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. Like if you can't get it off, just, and you got a new hose, you know it works, just razor blade the old one. All right, uh, test driving around. The new thermostat definitely shows that it is running thermostat installed the uh, fluids in it and just test driving around right now and um, it gets all the way down to like 178 or something like that so it's keeping it cooler than new thermostat for sure maybe a new sensor who knows staying tight so far um, but I'll get a summary here of what's going on with the engine but this part's good uh, this is a review after driving it. It's uh, they got videos on the burping process here Basically, you leave the cap off you fill it um, Leave the engine running and then um, I shut it off put the cap back on drove around like a mile came back and It's it's pulling cooling down, but had it running and looked at all the uh, Connections and like the other day when I saw it it was like spewing fluid right out of that area so that's what to watch out for all these new connections and gaskets and everything uh, make sure it's not gushing out fluid when you button everything back up uh, the harder one to do honestly the this guy wasn't too bad because it's a little more open this guy is a real pain in the butt um, one thing I that would help that I did not have some sort of driven knuckle drive like battery air tool or um, some sort of real tight knuckle drive just for getting those three uh, E3 E10 bolts out would have helped everywhere honestly uh, word to the wise this thermostat the bolts are not captured so it's best to put some tin foil or plastic bag or something under it because I dropped all three uh, bolts lucky you found them but uh, yeah that's that's the gist of what's going on there Okay, using my uh, truck has a, uh, what do you call it, um, tool bench, but uh, let's see, you're going to need like your metric S and SAE, some generic sockets. Big one I'd recommend is a uh, E-Series, which is like an inverted tack, uh, Torx, so this came from Harbor Freight, I can put some descriptions of where you can get them from Amazon and things like that, but it's an E-10 that both of these were held on by. Um, max torque you got a dual beam like this so I went to 15 Newton meters and um, the, let's see that, that's the best information I could find right now without a tech manual what it went to but honestly you're compressing a gasket pretty thick rubber gasket on both of them so when that gasket compresses all the way metal to metal you're probably pretty good let's see here but like it brought up a 90 degree like driven ratchet that's either electric or pneumatic because this is all I had. I had this guy and over here in the box I had this little thing to help drive the screws on. That was one of the most tedious parts. Um, let's see here. Got this PTFD grease to put uh, around the hose body. It's just helping slide on. It's Teflon so it's you know high temperature rated and um, Let's see here, put the bulb grease on the connections. Um, I guess I'll hang on to some of these old sensors just in case. Got a plastic razor blade, blade scraper uh, for cleaning off the gasket surfaces. Of course you need your gloves, um, just a garbage bag, and radio is a must. <laughs> um, they got those uh, constant tension pliers. I just use these, uh, what do you call it, the wrench right there. And I think that's the gist of it. Other things that would help is like a magnet on a stick in case you drop anything. But if you can put a plastic bag, like a grocery bag, like this guy underneath what you're working on, then if the bolt drops, it drops onto something white and you can see it rather than into the abyss. Uh, let's see here, some needle nose pliers. These were helpful. And I had a half inch uh, open wrench for taking the battery terminal off. Yeah, that's pretty much it for what's going on there. 
So here I'm showing the parts I took off again. You can see the that just turned to total garbage right there. Um, but yeah, both new parts are aluminum, like a cast. Uh, let's see here. There, here's the, the old thermostat. Nothing was really wrong with it. It would run a little bit hot, so I'm hoping this new one, when everything is all calibrated in with coolant, will run cooler for here in Florida. Uh, these, let's see here. These bolts were captured on this one, but the new one, they're not captured. So that's something to watch out for. And then the original, this is the original one for, you know, it's 10 years old, 145,000 miles. These bolts are not captured. So I lost all three and I was fortunate with a flashlight and a magnet on the stick right there, able to get them back. Uh, this hose connection right here is a real pain in the butt. It's best to undo all three bolts and it's spring loaded so it wants to pop out of there. That's another reason the bolts fell out. And uh, once you get this thing free, you can go in there with um, either channel locks or uh, the pliers that are meant for those constant force uh, clips to get that thing off and then get it back on again. Again, a little bit of grease on all these helps to get everything connected up. Um, this connector right here was a little tricky to get off. And when I took it out, the whole, whatever you call it, thing just kind of dissolved in front of me, I guess. I don't, I don't know if I should say dissolved, but the spring popped out right there and the little cap for it. So this is no longer a contained unit. Uh, it's hard to tell if anything broke, it might have. Right there, it looks like it did. But um, probably when it was released. I was trying to be really careful of FOD protection, so I just took um, paper towels and uh, wadded them up and put them like in the turbo intake or and stuff like that, air intakes, just to keep anything from falling in there. It's not supposed to be in there. But that's the gist of all the stuff.